Hey, it's Camille. Welcome back to my channel. A few things have been happening around here lately. For one, I went to my storage and I found my espresso maker, which I have been without in so long. For two, I've started playing the violin in the last month. And so I'm excited about that. And so maybe I'll make a violin video. I was up last night after church. I volunteered at the church for the youth ministry. And uh, anyways, I was just like playing the violin because I'm just enjoying learning a new thing. Uh, for three, I am improving my juggling skills. And for four, I'm going through the first four books of the New Test Old Testament in a row. So Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I'm in Numbers right now. And it really made me think about uh, the topic of this video, which is how to get out of a wilderness season and how to not really more, how to not die in the wilderness because we can die in the wilderness. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel. If you would like this video, if you like it, leave a comment below of anything that God is showing you or anything you like from this video. Um, and yeah, so I just, God has really been working in my life, a work of trust in him. And years ago, someone sent me a book called The Wilderness and the beauty of the wilderness um, and all the things you learn in that time of not being at the promised land, but going through uh, the wilderness with the Lord. For the, If you don't know, the children of Israel, um, they got delivered from slavery in Egypt through Moses and ultimately God. Um, but then they had like, I don't know, a seven day journey to the promised land, but God had them in the prom in the wilderness for 40 years, just learning how to be led by the spirit. That's what I was learning that the wilderness is really about it. Also about being purified by the Lord. And a lot of them didn't make it into the promised land because they kept on grumbling. They kept on. And then Moses also, God told him, speak to the rock for the water to come out. And he struck the rock and it said because of his rebellion Aaron and Moses didn't get to go into the promised land either and Miriam died in the wilderness as well and Joshua ended up bringing them into uh, the promised land which I just didn't realize this but Moses changed Joshua's name from like Oshea to Joshua which meant like salvation to like I don't know exactly what it was. I don't know if it was deliverer or not, but I thought that's really interesting. I never thought about Joshua's name being changed in the Bible. He's one of my favorite people in the Bible uh, for sure. And just see like a strong man of character. I just think he's awesome. Um, so anyhow, I thought what would keep us in a wilderness season? Because God wanted to bring his people into the promised land. Um, but they kept on fighting the Lord. And they kept on having just, they just didn't like God. They judged God. They judged their leaders. And they came against Moses over and over again. And then God would send a plague to them. And I thought today, wow, the people of Israel were hard-hearted like Pharaoh of Egypt. <laughs> I was like, they said, uh, God said, these people have tempted me 10 times. And I thought, wow, he gave 10 plagues to the Egyptians, you know, to turn. And God ultimately was probably showing the Egyptians as well that he is God. And actually that's giving the Egyptians hope to actually turn to the Lord. It's my thoughts on that. Um, Cause when God like makes sure you know that uh, it's him behind something, it's like you have hope. Now you know there's a real God. And so anyhow, I thought what could keep you in the wilderness when you're not supposed to be in it? And what is the promised land Anyways, for all of us, you know, we're not going to be moving to Israel. Most of us will not. Um, but what is the promised land that God has called you to in your life? And so I thought about this and I think, I think the ultimate promised land in our life is actually knowing the Lord and being close to the Lord and being intimate with the Lord and being obedient to the Lord and having our lives just free of um, being a slave to sin. And that is something I was thinking about, really pondering, because the Bible says that if you, um, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. And so I thought, what does that mean? Think about being a slave. A slave is run by a master, right? And then their actions are controlled by that master for the most part. And so I thought, wow, like when we sin, it's actually just obeying your flesh, which is the, the devil is, you know, inspiring you to do something wrong. And 
you're just not fighting the flesh. You're not actually taking dominion and authority over your flesh. And so this is why I think fasting is so important is it's a, it's a, I fast every Thursday. So today is Thursday and I'm having my green tea. That is my drink today. And actually I was going to have, I wanted to have coffee this morning, but, um, I was kind of fighting it for a few hours. Like, okay, like maybe I'll have it later. Oh, I wasn't in the mood for it, but it was kind of like, you know, I just got my espresso machine out. And like on fasting days, I usually have coffee. Lately I've been just doing tea. Um, and which also doubles as just like detoxing your body of dairy and, um, food and everything. And so, um, actually I kind of, kind of started last night fasting. I'm kind of doing like a sundown to sundown fast this time where often I would just do all in one day, but, um, the Jewish people do sundown to sundown. And so I thought, well, let me try that out and maybe it won't be so unbearable. Sometimes I break my fast at nighttime, like maybe at 10 at night or nine or something. Sometimes I'm really working and I don't know, maybe I should just put my flesh under, but we're growing. But anyhow, whenever you fast, you learn how to put the flesh under and then you learn how to be the master of your body, you know, of your thoughts, of your mind, of your actions. And um, that so many people never become, they never take dominion over themselves, right? They never put themselves into subjection to the word of God and to the Lord. And, you know, and it, it I did a video on cleanliness. It turns into it. Um, whenever you're, you're not in control, your health is usually out of whack. I was talking to this girl at youth last night. And she said, I said something about that's whack. She said, no, you can't say that. Like, that's not what the youth say. I'm like, I like what I say. <laughs> I don't need to be 12. I like being 30. Um, she was like telling me like, whenever you see other kids, she was telling me how to be young, you know, and they had no idea I was 30. They thought I was like 20. And so I was like, and I just said yesterday, this is kind of turning into a blog, blog video. I just looked at myself yesterday. I said, you know what? I think I got back 10 years. I think the Lord has sustained my youth. And then they told me I looked 10 years younger at youth last night. Like, oh, no way. I did not think you're there. But really, I talked to this guy. Um, he was like 83 and he fasts a lot. And his skin looked so good. I was singing at a revival recently. I just like touched his skin. And I was like, because I knew that he fasted a lot because I knew him in Tulsa. And years ago before he moved to Missouri. And um, I was like, Oh my goodness. And he's really been in the presence of the Lord. And I really believe that being in the presence of God rejuvenates you. I think it gives you back years. I give, think it gives you back youth. Also fasting. I really think fasting um, is really good for your health. It's so, so important to take a food break regularly. Literally, even if I wasn't like a Christian, which I don't ever want to say that because I love being a Christian and I would never want to not be a Christian, but I'm saying like, even if I wasn't fasting for spiritual reasons, which is why I'm fasting, um, just to get close to the Lord. And I want to have that spiritual fire hot, you know, and so easy to get our, our fire cold, you know, or not have a fire at all. And so that actually goes into part of my other thoughts, which was um, things that dole our relationship, our fire for the Lord, our love for the Lord, our passion for the Lord. Um, you know, first of all, just the first thing is just get rid of dirty media. If something is like provocative and and just evil, dirty, um, sexual content, cursing, cussing, taking the name of the Lord in vain, um, why do people want to take the name of the Lord in vain? I was just listening to something today. It was this political thing. And I was like, why would he? Why would he use curse word of Jesus? when that is the most holy name in the world. And that is the name by which we are all saved and by we can, we can get healed. And something also that I've been pondering lately, I really am pressing in for more. I'm pressing in for, I want, I will lead worship. And I, I did the three day revival recently. And as I was doing it, I was thinking, you know, just singing is not enough. Just people worshiping is not enough. I want God to move powerfully in these times. I want people to know how to worship for one and to get into their word, to get into the Bible after or even during worship and to get healed. I want to, I want to have the power of the Holy Spirit moving when I am singing. And so these things require, um, the Bible says some demons don't come out, but by prayer and fasting, they require a being on the Holy road. And you don't always get to where you want to be with God as fast as you want to get there. 
but it's a process. It's a journey with God and he's stripping away all the things that are not of him, all the things in us that are just flesh that's alive, that wants to control our lives and wants to doubt God. And it's just like, oh, it's all futile. You know, we don't understand him. So we judge God sometimes. And so it's just like, oh my goodness, I don't even understand Lord all of I don't understand all of you, so I'm reading the Old Testament right now, and I'm learning how life really works, which is, like, God's judgment is just, and his mercy is wonderful, and his mercy is, like, unearned, but it's, but in a way, it's like, you get God's mercy even when you get, when you deserve his justice, uh, when you turn your heart to him, and you just say, God, I love you, I, <laughs> just last night, I was, um, going to sleep and I just told the Lord, I, I love you. I love you. You know, I love your word and I love your word. And I was just thinking about how much I love his word. And I was just like, I'm just like having like this, this, um, kind of revival in my own life lately. And I'm just falling in love with the Lord more. I am trusting the Lord more. I am, um, I am okay with wherever God leads me in life, you know, and I'm just having this wonderful little oasis on this little cabin on the lake, this little one bedroom house. Um, it's like, it's like a two, it's like, it's feel like two bedroom, but it's like, it's like the living room and the kitchen and then like, um, my bedroom. So it's technically a one bedroom. Um, but it's not just like everything's in the same room. So it's kind of partitioned, you know, but um, I'm just so thankful for this season that the Lord is just like stripping me away from everything. I'm away from my family, but they're like three and a half hours away. Which I'm going to go see them this weekend to see my sister. She is turning 16, so I'm excited about that. We're going to go ice skating and um, make a big old breakfast for her and girl sleepover and all this stuff. So I'm um, going to go have fun there. But um, anyways, I'm just thinking about this wonderful getaway that the Lord has me in this season and I'm just like living by faith and God is like totally showing me his provision and I'm getting gaining supporters and I'm also um uh singing in town singing at the coffee shop singing at a revival singing at a men's retreat singing at the capital of Missouri for a prayer fest event and I'm just like God just for life events before that and I'm in a new city and God is just opening doors for me where I am you know, and that people, like someone donating to, it's just like, and like someone gave me a tip, the two $20 tips recently on my um, albums on my website and then in my, uh, on Cash App for my gig I did. And I'm just like, thank you, Lord. I can, I'm seeing how like, and I'm, I'm trusting out on my giving, I'm giving uh, money away sometimes. And I'm like, Lord, I know that you're going to repay that. And um, recently I gave away, um, I gave away a $10 tip to um, a guy at the uh, thrift store and um, Christian uh, thrift store. So I just felt like I should, I just felt like, you know, what? it's time to be generous. And so I said, Lord, I ask you that you repay that. And when I got to the car, I looked at my cash app and this girl had sent me 20 bucks, which I like, that was such a big tip. And she's a young woman. And I just would not have expected that. Like, you know, I think maybe like five bucks or I don't know, or more, 10, I don't even know. I just, 20 would just threw me for a loop. Like what on earth, you know? And then I gave something the other day and um, the Lord like totally made it up to me like the next day, like got donation. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Like I can trust you. I'm just seeing his hand of provision on my life and I'm just seeking and going into him. So anyhow, this video is about getting out of the wilderness, but it's also about everything else going on in my life. And, um, when basically like you can be in this kind of wilderness state of life where the, God, for one, if you're not ready for whatever God has, maybe your promised land seems like doing your ministry, or maybe it seems to you like getting married or, um, I don't know, having your own business or something, you know? And I think ultimately all of us should, should be most likely somewhat self-sustaining, which I think we should all be self-employed as Christians and employing others and not being under uh, someone who's not a Christian employer who's going to like, you know, suppress you from being able to share the gospel and from being able to get off to go and do important things sometimes whenever it can happen, but maybe they just don't want to let you. So basically getting out of this whole world system, ideally we want to get, get, get 
um, self-sustaining with our food and with our finances and save up, pay off our houses, things like that. And also, you know, get healthy and, but basically like the wilderness time is a training time, you know, and you can actually die in the wilderness if you don't, um, if you don't really cling to the Lord. And how many people do you know that die not doing their calling, maybe never even getting very close to the Lord where they're really soft and this is not a guarantee just because you get older that you get more like Jesus. And, um, but I think God is always, always pursuing us. He always is turning us into his bride. He's always trying to turn us into his bride, which is, you know, a bride. If you think of a bride, um, you think of someone that somebody wants to marry, you know, they've chosen them. Um, well, sometimes they don't know them fully, but God knows us fully. Um, sometimes they find out afterwards, oh my goodness, they were not ready, you know, but um, as the bride of Christ, God is shaping us and forming us and washing him, washing us with the word of God, like the Bible says, and he's transforming us and he's renewing our minds, but we have to really spend time in the word of God, empty our life of dead works, dead things, worthless idols, idolatry, you know, movies, so important, go through your movies, See if they're filled with sex and language and lying and cursing, just taking the name, so Lord of the name, name of the Lord, all those things that are just like so obviously evil. These things do not belong in our houses. They're like little idols. Like we want to keep these little idols around because we like them or we think they represent us or something. It's just like, no, God is trying to get us clean, clean vessels, clean vessels for his service. We want to like keep, you know, I, I don't have a good example for it, but we think we kind of carry these things in our identity, sometimes movies and music and music, all these like things that are just dirty in nature. They just, um, they just dole our heart for the Lord and they steal our love for God and they distract us and put us in the direction of this worthless thing that doesn't deserve our time. And is truly trying to distract us from God's path to end up eventually in hell. So that's not worth it. Whenever you could actually be drinking from the river of life, which is the Lord, feasting on his word and gaining friends that love him and starting a business that is something that you are excited about, or maybe God doesn't have you doing a business, but like he can lead you to the right job too. I was talking to um, people lately about getting to church on Sunday morning and so many times a job will keep somebody uh, from going to church. And, and the Bible, you know, talks about, you know, taking a day of rest, of course, and also um, meeting together regularly. And so a lot of times we get disconnected um, from our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And um, it doesn't mean that you're going to fall away from the Lord, but it does, and it sometimes can though, but it can mean that your life is not turning into a fruitful Christian life where you affect more people than yourself, or maybe the few people around you. And so you've got to, you want to get connected to God, connected to the body of Christ. And so that you're using your gifts that God's given you and developing your gifts to edify um, other believers. And so anyhow, uh, get out of the wilderness as fast as possible. Beg and plead the Lord and just say, Lord, change me, change me, change me. I want to love you. If there's anything in my life that is dishonoring to you, displeasing to you, Lord, show me how to to help me take it out of my life and show me highlight those things to me because a lot of times we don't even see um, the things that uh, are obvious to someone else who's been with the Lord for a while but sometimes it's just like our little like protected pet that we don't realize um, is actually stealing from us instead of giving to us so thank you guys for watching my video you can get on my new website camilletoday.com I'm going to be uploading um, uploading I'm going to be putting more things on there. I've got my music up there right now. Um, we're going to be selling cross necklaces at one point and I'm just kind of building my store um, and also putting some blogs and different resources on there. So thank you guys. God bless you. I will see you soon and um, let me know how your life is going with the Lord and anything else. Uh, oh, if you want to support me monthly, Patreon is below and you can leave a tip or whatever like that you want to do. Um, also, I don't know, but bless you and love you. Bye.